this pilot thought he had permission to open fire on an RAF surveillance plan. Uh, terrifying, uh, but the sort of thing that can happen in these circumstances. Let's talk to someone who I think will identify with this greatly, a former RAF fighter pilot, Tim Davis. Welcome, Tim. Hi, Kev. How you doing? I'm all right. Uh, what's your take on this? I mean, you know, uh, pilots, uh, I suppose it could happen on both sides, uh, getting their orders or their instructions are all wrong. You know, he fires, he open fires. Thank God he missed. If he'd have hit that plane, I mean, all hell would have broken loose, right? Yeah, we've only got three of them as well, and they're pretty expensive. It's a listening aircraft communication platform that obviously was flying out of Cyprus over the Black Sea and obviously was targeted by these Su-27s. It looks like the missile that was fired was a, a, a longer range R-27. Well, both, it seems. And I think what you've mentioned there, the communication between the two pilots, seems to me that it was an intentional uh, act that luckily uh, wasn't successful. Yeah, and uh, apparently the other pilot in the Russian plane got furious with the guy uh, for firing it because he thought he was getting trigger happy. I think this pilot got rather excited. When you're up there, I mean, is there something inside of you just that you would love to get that order, right, go to war, fight, 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 open fire? Is there something in pilots that is yearning for that moment? Well, no, I don't want to get. I don't want to get killed. I don't want to kill anyone. That's not. That's not what Royal Air Force pilots do. Oh, not um, Royal Air Force. Russian pilots. Well, it's interesting. Now that that aircraft you talk about is now escorted by two typhoons, and you don't want to mess around with typhoons. I mean, there's not many more capable aircraft in the world than than a Royal Air Force typhoon flown by a Royal Air Force pilot. Mm. But no, you you obviously want to practice your skill set. We all understand that. Mm. I think the problems that the Russians have in what is an exceptionally confusing air picture. That's mm. the other thing we have to remember because, of course, war is very confusing. Mm -hmm is they tend to fly with one very senior pilot and one very junior pilot. And we do something similar, but of course, if you're not getting the flying hours, then of course you do get a bit rusty. And this guy may well have heard something and he thought, I believe, that he was declared as a target and he felt he had the right to engage. And that seems to be what happened in this particular case. Uh, you talked about the confusing picture uh, up in the air. Uh, we'll talk about the Ukraine war. I'm assuming, by the way, Tim, that uh, this uh, RAF plane surveillance plane had the right to be there black sea isn't actually russian territory is it so uh the confusion would be uh, why would this russian plane think it, if it, we were over russian territory then i assume the picture would be different but if we're not over russian territory why would this russian pilot think this is the time to open fire yeah, totally valid. So here's the thing that I used to do when I was flying tornadoes in the Air Force is try and look at it from the enemy's perspective. In our, our narrative now that the Western media puts out, of course, is that the West is good and Russia is bad. But in, in Russia, it's the opposite. As you can imagine, Russia is good and the West is bad. In fact, Russia sees us as an imperialist aggressor. The interventions into Iraq, Syria, uh, Libya, you know, Afghanistan, we could go on. And then they go into Ukraine and all of a sudden the West kicks off. So from their point of view, we're, we are the aggressor in that particular situation, as abhorrent as that may sound to us. And I'm not defending anyone. Okay, I get, you I get know what I'm you're saying. Defending. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, yeah. So, of course, the aircraft is listening over the Black Sea. It listens to the battlefield. It identifies with the electromagnetic spectrum, everything coming out with it, uh, everything coming out, even a, a tank starting his engine or a radar dish or emissions from a radio or someone using a mobile phone. And it collects the information and it passes it to the Ukrainian military. So, of course, if you're a Russian pilot and you're suffering losses on your side, then that's a pretty good thing to go and kill because those losses will be, well, diminished or even, even stopped. So you can see from the Russian side, taking out something like that, that is in international water or international air, whatever you want to call it, mm. you know, fair enough. Yeah. It is in their interest to do something like that, most definitely, yeah. Have you been in any of those circumstances where you can see enemy jet, not enemy jets, but jets from other countries, what you might call hostile countries like Russia? Have you ever seen anything like that? And can you hear each other? Do, do pilots from both sides talk to each other? Would this Russian plane have warned the RAF first, if you don't get out of this airspace, we'll shoot? Uh, is there any communication? Have you been in any circumstances, anything like this? Yeah, so I was in southern Iraq over the town of Basra with a wingman and we were doing some uh, work there looking at pipelines and some other aspects that I probably can't go too much into, but we're working very close to the Iranian border. 
And Iran did send a couple of aircraft up against us to uh, dissuade us of doing the task that we were doing. And you're told about it. You know, you're told from our ground control, these guys are this far away. And you know what range their weapons have as well. And it's not healthy to hang around in those kind of situations. So the rivet joint aircraft, um, they would have known those aircraft were there. As I think we've heard, it was probably listening to the communications between them. It is a reasonably well defended aircraft, of course, insofar as it would have countermeasures itself. However, it's it's pretty unprotected. It seems to be a beyond visual range missile, so which means you can't see the aircraft. So you'd lock it on the radar. You'd look for a declaration of hostile intent, which it doesn't seem that the Russians had at this particular time. And then, of course, once you get the clearance, you can in, you can engage. But, um, yeah, it's a difficult situation, that one, isn't it? But I'll be honest with you, though, Kev, if we go into these conflicts, they become murkier and murkier. How long are they going to go on for? And these things are going to happen. Um, I can see it happening. We can all see it happening. And uh, maybe these are the things we should think a bit more carefully about before we enter into these. I'll tell you what, Tim, you're, de you're the, definitely the man for this story. Uh, just to uh, finalise it, uh, to sum up, th this was a frightening incident. And thank God that Russian pilot missed yeah, absolutely, 100%. There's typhoons with the aircraft now. But I'll be honest with you, Kev, you've got to look at it from the Russian perspective. That's all I'm saying in this. And that's how I look at it as well. Why would the Russians be doing this? Well, because we're doing that as well. So it is this very confusing air picture. And I think I think there were very good lines of communication established, weren't there, between our government and the Russian government to say, hang on, is this a mistake or not? And I think the Russians did come back and say, look, this was not intentional. This was We were not even looking at doing anything like this whatsoever. So hopefully if those lines of communication are maintained, then uh, we shouldn't have too much more of this in the future. But of course, we are literally supplying Ukraine as NATO. And mm -hmm. as far as Russia is concerned, that probably is the definition of hostile intent. Absolutely. Uh, Tim, uh, great to talk to you again. Let's talk again soon. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, that's Tim Davies, uh, former RAF fighter pilot. As you can see, he's been in situations like that. As, as we can, you can also see, uh, that was a very frightening incident. And thank God that Russian pilot missed. Because if he had hit it, God knows what would have happened. 30 RAF staff on board of that plane. Uh, extraordinary. We came close to World War III there, trust me.